Hi everyone, welcome back uh, to STEM coding videos. My name is Daniela. And I'm Jamor. And we're gonna continue our STEM coding adventure with escape velocity and Newtonian black holes today. So last time um, we did this activity, we were looking at the slingshot with gravity and we found out that uh, the gravitational force uh, between two objects, a massive object and a less massive object like the comet and Earth or the sun and the Earth um, is this equation over here. We have force, gravitational force is equal to g big M little m over r squared. And we figured out that r squared, uh, we needed that squared in there so that things orbit in ellipses. And we saw that in the last video. Yes. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to open up our code again and continue where we left off. But now we're going to focus on Newtonian black holes. But before we get to that point, we'll start with a simpler example of just focusing on Earth. So if we open up our code again, you'll get an editor like this. And let's just try and run it for a moment to see what we see here. All right. In the very beginning, well, it might be helpful to minimize this screen so that we can see a little bit more of the code. You will notice that, say this thing's a comet, our comet is orbiting the Earth in this kind of elliptical pattern that we found would happen last time. So we want to notice a couple different things about this. First thing noticed is that in the code, we changed from X planet and Y planet to something like X massive and Y massive. So that way we can look at any particular object. It's not specific to the Earth or any other planet. Another thing we'll notice is that we're allowed to click in this screen, drag our velocity arrow in whatever direction we want, and say if we make the velocity too small and point toward the Earth, it'll crash and we'll get the unfortunate news that our astronaut just died. <laughs> and as I mentioned before, this picture of Earth you see here is actually a famous one from the 70s that brought about a change in human consciousness and how we view the Earth. So you're witnessing a bit of history here, but getting to play around with it yourself. Yes, yeah, so we're going to continue um, this activity by fir first by changing um, the X position and the Y position of where we're going to start. So since we're on a planet now, it's not just a dot, a blob. Uh, we're going to start on the surface of the planet. So, um, okay. yes. So, since we're going to start on the surface of the planet, uh, instead of having these x, y coordinates, we're going to change them to x massive plus the planet radius. That will allow us to start um, on the surface of the planet. <laughs> okay, so what I simply did there was I pressed control V instead of doing any of the right clicking and pasting here. Um, the code works much in the same way that Microsoft Word would work, where you can do something like control C to copy. Or in our case, because a button's already here, you just click copy to clipboard, you come to the code that you want to modify, you can highlight it, and then instead of right clicking or pressing delete or anything, just hold down your control key, click V, and then it replaces your X and your Y with X equals x massive plus planet radius and y equals y massive. Mm -hmm. So yep, so with this now we're going to be starting off on the surface of the planet. Yes. Of Earth. And you can see very briefly when I press play, we crash pretty fast. However, our um, comet here crashes, you know, it starts getting launched from basically the surface of the Earth, it crashes immediately. So let's try and change that a little bit. So here around step three, we want to go about changing the initial velocity of the object. And we want to ask ourselves, does, change, does having an initial velocity that start in x as opposed to starting along y actually affect anything? So how do we do that? Well, first we go back to our code. Stop it. And we say here, that vx is equal to 0 and vy is equal to 30. The difference is now we're going to change it to vx equals 30 and vy equals 0. So vx, I'm just going to put 30. And vy, I'm going to put 0. And we'll try this again. We'll notice that we crash again almost immediately. Right? And that might be surprising to you at first because you might think, well, if I give, me, if I give this object a lot of velocity, and that velocity is completely 
opposite the direction of the planet, it should be a bit easier to try and escape the planet's orbit than if I were to go perpendicular to it and I'm still, you know, a little bit closer to the planet's edge. However, that turns out not to be the case. So, we can actually try some different values of Vx or Vy, in this case changing our Vx. And we saw we crashed with 30, which is what we began with. So let's just increment by 10 with each step. So instead of 30, let's try 40, and we'll see what happens. Still okay. Crashed. We crashed again. You did. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, no survivors in this one. So let's try 50. Hope for better luck. Will you make it? Oh, you made a bit. Okay. So we're getting closer. Yeah. We noticed that we're surviving a little longer. So it's probably safe to just take more small steps and try and get to the edge where we just managed to escape. So if that was at 50. We will try 60 now. Okay. Oh, that one looks much better. It looks like we might just get out of here today. Let's see what happens. Uh oh. So this oh. landing's not going to be too friendly. <laughs> but you can tell the velocity and the force are pointing in the same direction. So we're expecting acceleration toward the planet. And unfortunately, dead we're again. dead again. All Survived right. a lot longer this time, though. We did, so we're getting there. I think 70 should do the trick, but let's find out. Okay, now we're just far off screen. So you're also going to want to wait a little while while this is when you go to higher velocities, just to make sure that it doesn't turn around and come back. Mm -hmm. So maybe a good 20 seconds or so would do the mm -hmm. trick. Mm. So at 70, it definitely escaped. So let's try something. Instead now of starting with VX, let's see if the same thing happens for VY or if it's a little different. So let's go back to Vx equals exactly zero. And Vy, we started with 30, but it ended up crashing immediately. So let's go back and try 40 now. So 40 for Vy. Same and thing. that was quick. The only difference now, you'll notice in our crash, is that we kind of spiral into the black hole as opposed to just getting pulled in like it's some kind of rope. So into the Earth as though instead of being pulled in. Okay, so let's try Vy equals 50. Oh, I think you're in orbit now. Oh, so we are in orbit. But that's not what we want. Yes, we want to actually escape. Mm -hmm. So this is a somewhat interesting position to be in because notice now we have this orbit that looks to be pretty stable. And that's fine if you just want to launch a satellite around the Earth. It's not fine if you actually want to escape the Earth and go somewhere else. So instead, let's go up to 60. That looks promising. Yes. We might get it. Though I uh, am a little worried because that force is still pointing toward Earth. Yep. Oh. That was a very close call with yes. it. <laughs> Very close, but somehow we survived, so that was more or less a gravitational slingshot you just saw. Um, let's change this to 70 now and see if we can escape like we did previously. Seems like we're doing it. Yes. And isn't 70 what you chose for VX before also? Yes, it is. 70 is, seems to be a good number. Um, we can try and see if we can get anything a little bit closer. So 60 fails, 70 works. Let's just split the difference and how about try 65? Sounds like a good idea to me. Okay. Let's try 65. So again, I'll just launch this in Y. But bear in mind the same physics will apply if I launch this in X. The path will just look a little different. Looks like he's going to go out. I think we're getting out of the there. Universe. Oof. So, I think we could say 65 is probably as good as we can get around playing with this. I think 
think so. And just to verify, we can try 65 for Vx. So let's go back to Vy equals 0. Vx equals 65. And we will play. Okay. Yep, definitely doesn't look like it'll come back anytime soon. Yes. So this velocity is what we would call the escape velocity because we escape the gravitational potential that the more massive object is creating. Um, and that velocity we'll get back to a little bit later on when we actually derive what that velocity is.